on Shabbat Perik Aleph, Mishnah Yud Aleph. Last Mishnah, the 11th Mishnah, the first chapter of Masech Shabbat. Okay, so until now, the last Mishnah we learned that you are not allowed to be tzolin, you couldn't roast meat. You couldn't put meat on an open fire right before Shabbat unless it was roasted a sufficient amount. We said, Kima'achal ben Drusai was a third roasted, or a half according to the Rambam, but before Miba Odion, before it became night. Why? Because there was a problem of Maybe you'll Maybe you will stoke the coals, and if you stoke the coals, that's an Isudio Raita. So Chazal said you couldn't put food on an open fire unless it's sufficiently cooked. This Mishnah, Mishnah Yud Aleph, discusses exceptions to that rule. Says the Mishnah. Mishal Shalin et Pesach betanur im chashecha. Let's say you have a korban Pesach, and it's a korban, and you, it's Erev Pesach, the Erev Pesach, when you slaughter the korban Pesach, is also happens to be Erev Shabbat. So it's going to be Pesach night is Friday night. So you're roasting meat. When do you do it? You take the goat that you slaughtered, and you, and you put it into the oven. On, and normally Pesach night is not a problem, because you can cook. But here it's Erev Shabbat. So, so what are you going to do since it's Erev Shabbat? Don't we have a problem of leaving meat that's not sufficiently cooked under open fire? So the Mishnah says, Lishalesh, Meshashalim, means to lower down. So some interpretations interpret that they would, that the, 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 sto- the, the ovens they had were cone in shape. Now, it's interestingly enough, I, I think I looked for, uh, yeah, right, in the Machon Migdash, they don't have this view because it looks like they're not Mishalesh, Lishalesh. So it would seem, that according to the Mishnah, they were lowering it from the, I guess, the chimney in the top, and it was totally closed. Why? Because they wanted to be, they wanted it to be, um, to be, uh, to be, to maximize the heat. I looked for it. This is actually relevant to the last Mishnah. Remember, we we talked about it in the last Mishnah. I just have to show you. We talked in the last Mishnah about Harara of Agabeg Chalim, Remu Paneha. I just have to point that out. So I found this picture. I was looking for ancient ovens, and I found this picture. This is exactly what they would do. They would stick the bread to the side. And it would cook that way. So I imagine they would probably hang down the, you know, hang the korban on, in, they, would, they, would, they, would, they would hang it on a spit inside the oven so that it would roast from the oven itself. Kind of like shawarma. Okay, so that's what the Mishnah says. But in this case, Mishal Shalim, you can lower down the Pesach into the Tanur, im chashecha, right before dark. Ah, oh, what about Shema Yechateh Begachalim? The Bartanur says, Ha chashari, here it's permitted. Debenei chaburaz rizim him. Because nobody is allowed, you're not even allowed to eat the carbon Pesach alone. You have to have a Chabura. So therefore you're going to be Zvizin, uh, uh, you, have, you, will eat, you will act with alacrity. They remind each other. They will not come. Remember we said that term. You will not do it. You're not going to do it because the guys in the group are going to remind you, hey, stay, stay back. It's Friday night. Don't stoke the coals. Leave the carbon Pesach. Next. Umaachizin etaor bemedurat Beit HaMokeh. You can, in the, the Beit HaMokeh was a, was a place, let me see if I can find here, in the Wikipedia, it was a, a, a part, it was a, it was a, it was a room next to the Azara in the Beit HaMikdash. This is an, a, 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 a bird's eye view of the Beit HaMikdash. Here's the Mizbeach, here's the entrance into the Hecha, where the menorah is. The Beit HaMokeh stood right outside, it was half in the Beit HaMikdash, some part in and some part out. Right outside, uh, on the outside, the Azara. Where the, it was like the Kohanim's dressing room. And I, I showed you the picture a second ago. Here's the picture as it appears in, let me move myself, in uh, the, the Machon Megdash website. This is a picture, a partial picture of the Beit HaMokeh. Okay? And you could see the Kohanim slept there. And in addition, uh, they had a fire going. So the question is, how much of the fire has to be going in the Beit HaMokeh before Shabbat? Okay, so the Mishnah says, you just have to get it started. You just have to get the fire a little bit started. We're not afraid that the Kohanim who are there will, will, uh, will, will, will stoke the flames and cause it to burn better. The Kohanim zvizim him, because the Kohanim are very careful. Okay, but outside the Gvulim, meaning in the borders, outside the Beit HaMikdash, the fire has to be the fire has to already get caught, take, take, on most of the, most of the fuel. And this makes sense, because remember, remember, like, like, when you start, you lit the fire as, as late as you could right before Shabbat, because you wanted to come home Friday night and not have a freezing house. So therefore, you lit the fire, and however long it lasted, it lasted, and then you went to sleep. So, the point was, the Chazal said you had to be careful on Erev Shabbat, 
that the fire had already caught sufficiently that you wouldn't worry and try to you know, stoke it or whatever, incidentally, accidentally, so you wouldn't have a freezing Shabbat when Shabbat had already started. Rabbi Yudah, Rabbi Yudah says, if you're talking about coals, then kol shu. And as long as it's lit any amount, it's enough, because the, the, the fire is going to light. It's, if once you have the coal, once the coal is lit, that should be enough, and you don't need any more before Shabbat. We'll stop here. As always, if my will dedicate to learning the memory of my father, Rabbi Yudah, if you have comments or questions, you can email me. Have a great day.